It's time for us to take our model and textures and using Blender export them in the OBJ8 format that World Builder will take in as a scenery object and then bring it into X-Plane. So here I've already opened up Blender, and if you take a look, I'm actually using a slightly later version than I had before. This is 2.82, but this will work just fine. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video, you need to go back there and make sure you've added the X-Plane to Blender plugin inside of Blender. Now, you can check to make sure everything's working by going to Edit, Preferences, and then if we go down to Add-on, now if you type in X-Dash, it should load up the only thing that probably has an X and a dash in it, and that is the X-Plane plugin. As you'll see here, I have it checked, meaning that it's enabled. Now, let's go ahead and clean out our scene. I'm going to hit A to grab everything, and then X key to delete everything. Now, let's go ahead and load our model in. Go to File, Import, I'm going to choose the kind of file that I'm working with, which is the FBX file, because I brought it out of Maya. Now, you might also get STL files or the Wavefront OBJ version as well, in which case all of them will load just fine, although for some of them you might need to do a little bit of routine uh, maintenance to make sure that they work properly. Let's go ahead and click FBX. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my folder where I saved all my X-Plane data, X-Plane, and we will go to Substance Painter, FBX, and Building.FBX. Now, it's always a good idea to take a look at our transforms on our object to make sure that everything's baked in. That is, we don't want any rotations or weird scales because when we go to export this object, they might not take effect. So your building could end up being like a meter tall instead of, you know, 100 meters or something like that. The way we're going to do this is we're going to select the building. I'm going to click the N key on the keyboard and over here shows my transforms. Now, one thing you might notice is if you brought this in from another program, your rotations might have a funky angle to them, like a 90 degree offset, due to the fact that axes in different programs don't always line up. Some use Z up, some use Y up, and a lot of times when you bring this file from one program to another, when it's read in, it will automatically rotate at a certain amount so that things line up. Now, if you do have this problem, it's easy to fix. Hit Control A, and it's going to ask you to apply those transformations. You can do location, rotation, scale, or all of them. Usually, though, I only want to do rotation and scale, but that's just, it depends on the project and what I'm working with. Feel free to apply all if you want to. Another way to check to make sure the dimensions of your object are right is to just look in this dimensions tab right here. It allows you to see the exact global dimensions that your object is taking up. Basically, it's bounding box. And here we can see it's 10 meters by 20 meters by 36 meters, which is around the scale that I would expect. Now, if we come over here to our panel, what you'll notice is when I go to Object Properties, we have an X-Plane dropdown. Let's go ahead and choose Exportable Object. We can open this up, and what it'll ask for is the name at the beginning. The name is what this object will be called when you export it. It's the file name. So make sure that it actually describes what the object is. So let's just do Building Four Story, something like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change the name up here just because I like to keep things the same across everything. So let's go ahead and call this building for story as well. Next up, it's going to ask you for the type. Now in this video series, at the moment, we're only dealing with scenery objects. Therefore, we're going to click on this and go to scenery object. You'll have a set of different textures that you can set up. Default, night, normal specular, draped, or draped normal. We're not going to talk about draped objects right now, but the cool thing about them is it actually allows the object you've created to uh, fall onto whatever object or the terrain itself. X-Plane will subdivide that object up and put uh, polygons, um, that is, vertices at each point it intersects the vertices of the object it's draping on. Very interesting, but not right now. What we need to do is set up our locations for these textures. This is where you need to be a little bit careful. Where are we going to export this object out, and where are the textures going to be located in reference to it? The easiest thing for us to do is to make sure the textures and the file we're exporting out are in the same location, in which case, when we export this out, the relative path names work out just fine. However, I'm going to purposefully do it wrong to show you how to go back in there and edit the text document so they're in the right location. So I'm going to go to Textures, Default, click on my object, go to my X-Plane folder where I have my Substance Painter, Textures folder, building. And here I have my albedo, my lit, and my normal. So let's go ahead and select the albedo for default. And then we'll go to night, choose this. Now once again, this kind of irks me that the plugin itself calls things differently than what X-Plane refers to things as in other documentation. Night should really be called lit in this case. Let's go to textures, building, and then lit. And then finally, the normal specular one. Now it depends on what version of X-Plane you're targeting, either pre-10, 10, or 11, with how this normal map is going to be set up. Once again, refer to my previous video in Substance Painter about setting up the normal map to work properly based upon the kind of X-Plane you are targeting and system performance as well. Let's go back to our directory, X-Plane, Substance Painter, Textures, Building, and then we're going to be grabbing the normal map. 
In this video, we're not covering level of detail, so we're going to ignore that for right now. We're just going to have one level of detail, which is what this object is. But if you wanted to have multiple levels of detail, you could have up to three versions of your model based upon how far away you are from the object as you're flying toward it. Now, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to hit Control S and save my Blender scene. The reason for this is because at least in the previous version of Blender when trying to export these out, nothing would ever get exported. And I actually had to make sure I saved my scene before exporting to make sure everything works. So let's go ahead and save this scene out in our X-Plane folder. Create a new folder, call this Blender, and then say Building Export and Save. I'm not going to go over here to File and then Export because I noticed that students many times screw this part up and they choose the Wavefront OBJ file instead of the explain object file right here. If you're smart enough to not make that choice, then you can go ahead and use that if you'd like to. Alternatively, to make sure you don't grab the wrong one ever, you can come over here to your Scene Properties tab, and right down here is the Export OBJs file. It'll ask you which version of X-Plane you're targeting, and then a few other things. For this basic scenery asset that we're creating where it's just one object, the rest of these options don't matter so much. So let's go ahead and click Export Object. If we go ahead and navigate to where we save this Blender file, we'll have a building for storyobj file. Right click, and what we're going to want to do is open this with Notepad++. Now it's always a good idea to do this because it gives us a chance to review everything about our model and make sure we didn't screw anything up during the entire process of exporting, bringing in, and seeing it here. Now the first three lines are some of the most important ones. If you want to, you can memorize this command right here, texture, texture underscore lit, and texture underscore normal, and you never have to set the textures up over here. You can do it manually on this side. In this case, you'll notice that we have a relative folder structure where we start where we think our model is, and then we dive down into the substance painter textures building building thing right here, .png. This is probably not where you want this final file to end up at the end of the day. So what I am going to do is take these textures, copy them into the same directory I have my OBJ file in, and I'm going to change this directory structure right here so that it will find that PNG file. Another thing I'm going to do is go down to the very bottom and take a look at what's going on. You'll notice that we have the adder shiny wrap value of 1 here, which is for the shininess ratio on your object. Once again, this is for X-Plane 10. We are not using X-Plane 10 in this tutorial. We are using X-Plane 11, that is the PBR physically based rendering pipeline. So we're going to want to change this value to something else. Now instead of adder shiny rat, we're actually going to want to use normal metalness on our object. So let's go ahead up here and paste that in. Normal metalness. That should activate the PBR pipeline and use the more sophisticated shaders inside of X-Plane. If you don't do this, remember that you have different information in your normal map than what it's expecting, and it might cause some weird artifacts visually on your surface, especially extra shiny spots that shouldn't be there that might become distracting as you try to take off and land. So now I'm going to go and grab my textures and bring them into this folder. So let's come over here to X-Plane, Substance Painter, Textures, Building. I'm going to grab my two textures here, copy, and let's go back to our Blender folder and paste these in here. Now I can just change this path because the file is in the same directory as the object file. And there we are. So now we should be able to find this without a problem. Next up is for us to bring this all into World Editor to make sure everything's working, to place it someplace, maybe establish an airport so that we can easily see where this object is going to be, and teleport there using an airplane. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I have World Editor. Let's go ahead and open that up. If you get nothing on this menu, refer back to the first video where we set this up, but you should see all these options available because it's actually finding my X-Plane folder. If it doesn't show anything, go to Choose X-Plane Folder and navigate to wherever you have this installed. I'm going to go to Create New Scenery Package. Let's just call this Test Building for right now. Let's go ahead and open that scenery package. World Editor has a lot of tutorials and in itself is a whole other program to explore. We're not going to dive terribly deeply into this. We're going to do just enough to make sure everything works. Now, the first thing we need to do is come over here, and you'll notice that under my filter libraries, I have a local and a library folder. And if I click on local, you'll notice nothing pops up. This is because I need to put my asset, my object file that I've created, into this folder. So why don't we go ahead and navigate to where we'll find this folder? And that's going to depend upon where you installed X-Plane. Now I installed my version through Steam, therefore I need to go to my Steam library, Steam Apps, Common, X-Plane 11. And then what we'll do is go under Custom Scenery, and what you'll notice is there should now be a folder that you generated through World Editor called Test Building, which you see right here. Now if we open this folder up, what you'll notice is it's blank, and that's because we haven't created anything. But more importantly is we need to put that object asset and the textures inside of this folder. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So I'm going to take my three texture files and my object file, copy them and paste them into this directory. Now that I've done that, if I come over to World Builder, you'll still see that local says nothing. We're actually going to need to go ahead and close this and open it back up. It seems that it only reads whatever files are in there the first time it opens up, so you'll have to do this. So go to Open Scenery Package. Now if we go to Local, we'll see that we have BuildingStory.obj. Uh, and this is the most important thing for us to do, is to take a look really quickly at our building. And what you'll notice is, is that it's rotated funny. Therefore, we need to go back into Blender and fix this problem. So let's come back to Blender and take a look at our object and try to figure out what might be happening. So now coming back into Blender, what we'll notice is that we actually have a hierarchy of problems going on here. We have an object under an object under an object. We have no reason to have this much information going on. So what we should probably do is change how these objects are parented. So let's go ahead and just delete some of these things that are in our way. I'm going to delete that as well. Now we just have our polysurface object. We'll change this to building for story. Now we just have our mesh. If we check on our object, we'll notice it has a rotation of 90 degrees. If we hit the object, hit Control A, and then rotation and scale, apply transforms. Things work just fine. We can see also that all of our dimensions are still good. Let's go back over here. We'll go to File, and we will go to Export, and we will choose X-Plane Object this time, just so you can see it working in that way. We'll click on the object, go ahead and click Export, come back to our folder now, right-click on our object, go to Edit with Notepad++, take a look at things, and you'll notice that our texture directories are wrong again. And this is wrong. This is a good reason why you might want to set up your texture directories properly beforehand. So you don't have to, if you continue to export, you don't have to go back in here and make these changes. I'm just doing this to show you what to do when you mess it up. Now we're going to come back over here, type in normal metalness, save our file. I will come down here and we're going to remove the adder shiny rat just in case. Save that, close this out. We can copy our file, replace it back again inside of our X-Plane Custom Scenery Test Building folder. Come back to X-Plane, World Editor, close out of this, come here, open it back up. Now we can take a look at our local object and we'll see that we have our textures properly assigned to the object and it also appears that uh, it's rotated in the right direction. Now we just need to create a location easy for us to spawn into to test our object inside of X-Plane. So we're going to zoom in someplace on the world using the middle mouse button to zoom in. And let's think, where's a place that no one will ever be at, that we don't have to worry about things? How about somewhere uh, way up here in Canada, right? Somewhere in the icy areas. So we'll zoom in over here. And what I'll do is I'll get really, really far. And I'm using the right mouse button to move left and right. And at this point, you have nothing in your scene that you can actually see. But what we need to do is define our own airport. So let's go to airport, create airport. The reason why we're going through all this nonsense is because um, unless you use plugins, you can't just teleport to any location in X-Plane that you want to. Therefore, to test this object out, we're going to create our own airport that we can select in the X-Plane main menu system that will bring us to that location, and then we can take a look at our scenery objects from there. So let's go ahead and define a runway by selecting runway right here. We'll make a click here, and then we'll make a click down here, and then we have our nice little runway. Now, I'm not 100% sure about this next part, but I've done it before and it seemed to work, and that is defining exclusion zones. So if I click on exclusion and then click and make a box around this area that I want to exclude, which is right here, over here it says, what do you want to exclude? And usually I want to ex exclude things like forests, beaches, all kinds of na nasty stuff that's just going to really mess up everything uh, that's going to get between me and the, the scenery that I'm creating. So I'm going to exclude all that stuff. Now, when I did this before, it didn't exclude some of the generated vegetation, but I'm hoping that because we're choosing a completely isolated region in the Arctic, that this won't be a problem. Next up, we just need to place our object. Now, if we come over here and click on our object, it might automatically move you to object mode. If it doesn't, that's what this little building right here is. In which case, we can zoom on in, and we can, I like to put it at either end of the runway, just in case I spawn in on the wrong one. I can click and drag this over here, and we can see our building get placed. And now, when I left mouse click and drag, what it's doing is it's showing you the forward vector of that building. So here you can see the forward vector is going along this building in this direction. If you didn't like that, you need to go back into Blender here and rotate this 90 degrees, in which case we could hit the R key, then we could choose the Z key to uh, lock rotation vertically, and then if you wanted to, just type in 90 and then hit enter, and now your building is rotated 90 degrees. You would then hit control A again, apply your tr rotation and scales, and then you go to file and export this out and bring it in here. I'm gonna leave it as it is right now. It's fine with what I'm doing. So I'm gonna just click and add a few buildings just so we can actually see it. 
We'll come over here as well, add a few more buildings. Look at that, that's, that's gonna be very, very pretty, a very pretty scene that we're creating. Now, one thing I do want to make sure is that all my objects are actually under my airport, just for hierarchy purposes. So here I have unnamed entity. I'm actually gonna change that to uh, GDL airport. And under here, under selection, I'm going to go ahead, you'll notice the type is airport, and then we'll see airport ID. Well, I want it to be something that is easy for me to reference. So I'm just going to use my initials and put an X on the end. And there we go. Now in X-Plane, I can search for that airport just by typing in GDL X. You, of course, will use whatever you want to in your case. Now we can go to file. I want to go to export scenery pack. You might get some warnings. It doesn't really matter because they're just warnings, but if you want to fix them, go ahead. The GUI label is an interesting one. It's not necessary, and actually you can go over here and fix it if you want to, so we can come over here. So I am going to go ahead and make sure that name is appropriate. Go ahead and get rid of that airport on the end of it. There we go. Now, if you wanted to, you could also add that GUI label by going to airport, add metadata, and then doing GUI label. So we could add this one right here. If you click on it, I believe there's two different settings. There's like 2D and 3D or something that you can add, but I'm not too sure about that myself. Now, I don't know a whole lot about the GUI label. I haven't done much research into it, but just perusing some of the form questions, which unfortunately seems to be where most of the data is aggregated on X-Plane, which is why I'm making this video series, you can set it as either 2D or 3D. Once again, I don't know much about it beyond that. We are creating a 3D location, so I'm assuming I will set it to be 3D. Now let's try this again. We'll go to File, Export Scenery Pack, in which case, warning airport name is all uppercase. Wow, we get a lot of interesting warnings, don't we? So let's try this again. Let's just type in G GDL instead. Let's just call this George's Airport, or how about just George's Hell? We'll go to File and Export Scenery Pack. This time, we got no warnings. Everything was fine. We had that GUI label on it, even though we don't know what we're doing with it. And we've named things in a proper convention that X-Plane likes. So coming back over here now, let's go into our X-Plane folder. And what we'll notice is a lot more information. We still have our object file. And then now we have a validation report, which says nothing. Then we have our earth nav data, which has our apt.data file, as well as the location and all the information that we've put into it. So let's now go into X-Plane and make this work. So I'm going to go ahead and load X-Plane up. Let's make sure this doesn't crash anything. So we're just going to be playing normal X-Plane. So we're going to go to a new flight. And under new flight, I'm going to go to a search for, what was it, GDLX. And there we are, George's Hell. Uh, features are 3D. So that's interesting. So that's what actually the GUI label populates. I did not know that. Let's go ahead and if you want to, you can choose different times of day so that you can see whether or not the lit or unlit portions of it work. We're going to just choose a nice day, I think, to test that everything looks pretty good. We'll choose, you know, around noon as well. Now what we'll notice is our buildings are in here to the left and to the right. And if we hit, what is it? Control. So what is it? If we hold shift and the different number pad, so four, five, six, and seven, we can bring the camera out and take a better look at our scene and what these buildings actually look like. So there we go. There's our nice, wonderful building right there. And on the other side, oh, it's, it's in water. Apparently I've made my airport in water. So not a good place to put it for yourself, but maybe, uh, yeah, not a good place. But there we can see it. It looks like the normal map is functioning properly. Why don't we go ahead and uh, look, take a look at what this looks like at night to make sure all that works. So let's go back to main menu. Let's go to flight configuration. We're going to choose nighttime at the same location and hit apply. Hey, and there we go. So there's our lit texture at night as well showing up just fine for our building. But anyway, we've done it. So this is a real quick and dirty explanation, hopefully of all the different steps that were necessary to get your assets, your scenery assets, out of your 3D modeling application, paint it up in the right format, depending upon which version of X-Plane you're targeting, and finally, inside of X-Plane using World Editor. I hope you enjoyed this short series. This entire thing came because at work, I needed to get our assets into X-Plane. And I quite frankly noticed that the documentation online was fragmented all over the place across the forms, across, you know, developer notes that go periodically out on their websites and nothing really consolidated all the information in one nice, easy spot. If you want to know more about X-Plane, I'm certainly open to diving deeper into some of the other kinds of assets that you can create. Let me know below with a comment. See you all next time. So long and goodbye.